Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this. And this is an example of the Irish Army combat tunic. We're going to be looking at the trousers as well. Uh, issued from the mid to late 1980s through until the end of the 1990s, uh, when in 2000 the Irish DPM uniform was introduced for general issue. Uh, the reason, one of the reasons for this, interestingly enough, is to avoid confusion on the border during the Troubles, uh, with obviously the British troops using a DPM uniform. It was felt the plain green uh, was uh, a, gave a better distinction between the two forces. So the Irish uh, army stuck with green combat uniform for quite a lot longer than other, other nations and also with a very heavy duty, uh, hard wearing uh, and very well made combat uniform when a lot of other countries were going over to somewhat flimsier clothing. So it's a very nice combat uniform, I like it. Uh, and as the, those who've seen my previous videos will know, I, I do have a particular interest in combat uniform. And this is a particularly nice example. We have the British 1960 pattern on my right here, your left as you're looking at it, for con uh, comparison uh, during the video uh, whilst talking about the details of this. The reason for that is that prior to the introduction of this, uh, the Irish Army had used 1960 pattern and a slightly modified version as well, uh, starting in the 1970s when they introduced the British 1960 pattern essentially. Uh, the pattern is essentially exactly the same in both trousers and smock. There's a slightly modified version introduced a bit later on, and then you have this in the mid-1980s taking over from it. But a lot of the features, because it's a linear development from it basically, a lot of the features are taken across from the 1960 pattern, and we'll talk about that during the video. Just to be clear, this is the later pattern of 1960 pattern, which is what was issued to Irish forces. As far as I can tell from period photographs, I don't believe they had any of the first pattern, which would make sense given when Ireland introduced the 1960 pattern combat uniform. So we're going to talk about these in some detail, uh, comparing them, uh, and obviously have a look at the inside details and the trousers and so forth as we normally do in these videos. So hopefully it'll be interesting. As I say, this is known as a combat tunic as opposed to a smock. That's the, the Irish nomenclature for it. And it's basically, uh, it shares some features with the 1960 pattern, but there are some interesting features in this which differ. Um, one, which is very obvious looking at the front of it here, are the vertical uh, opening chest pockets here with a zip underneath a flap, you can see there. Got a heavy duty brass zip underneath there. A very good element of the design. Obviously, if you're wearing a smock like this, with the pockets with a button flap. If your webbing straps come down over them, it makes it very difficult to get into your top pockets. Whereas with this, you can un unzip them and get into from the side. Nice element of the design and, a, and a definitely a progression there in terms of design. The button spacing is slightly different down the front, but other than that, the front closure is very similar. We have a heavy duty zip here with the button flap over the top and a heavy duty metal zip. Nice to see something which was disappearing off other countries' clothing, a sort of flimsier plastic zips coming into use. This maintains a uh, heavy duty metal zip but a button flap over the front as i say the button spacing slightly different but otherwise very similar there draw cord at waist and at the hem as well the, the, the would be one here there is a channel for it but there isn't a draw cord fitted in this one at present the lower pockets are very very similar and we can see that uh, here but we'll, we'll have a more detailed look at that as i move these around it's perhaps easier to contrast uh, we have the the seams here underneath where the pocket would be if you had the patch pocket here very similar say a seam a, a dart taken in there to take the waist in somewhat and we have the stitched collar as well which is another distinctive element of the design you can see the stitched collar there not stitched in exactly the same way as the 1960 pattern but an element of the design that was carried over in a slightly modified form Similarly, we do have a flap on the collar here, which means the collar can be buttoned up around here to give some weather protection, which is again a feature carried across from the 1960 pattern, though the system of flap and button on the 1960 pattern is somewhat different, but the concept is basically the same. Another element which might be slightly easier to look at as we move these round, but nevertheless, we'll just have a quick look at that here, is the long epaulettes which come up to the collar here, as you can see, right up to button onto the collar there and this has the three buttons around similar to the 1960 pattern to allow a hood to be attached so that element of the design is basically the same as well. We'll move these around now and we'll have a look at the pockets, the lower pockets and compare them directly. So I've moved these around slightly here so you can see the lower pockets and the design is essentially taken directly across. We have a, a pleat stitched in at the bottom here, you can sort of see that. You, creases have uh, worked out of this from it being used similar with this but we again have the, the pleat sewn in the bottom here. The design of the lower pockets is basically taken exactly across from the 1960 pattern to this pattern of combat uniform. Turn these round fully now and we'll have a look at the details of the arm and the epaulette and so forth. 
Just to very briefly mention, we do have the rank worn directly on the sleeve of the combat uniform here, this being a three-star private, which is equivalent to private first class if you want a comparison. There's no such sort of grading of privates in the British Army, so a private wears no rank insignia. So these would be comparable in terms of, of issue. Obviously, by this point, the British Army no longer issuing the 1960 pattern, so it's not a direct comparison in terms of uh, timeline. We're more comparing the design features. So. Talking about that a little bit more, we'll look at the sleeves first. We have here on the 1960 pattern, which is obviously the earlier uniform, the pre-existing uniform, two buttons at the cuff with a pointed flap, pointed tab on the cuff there with a gusset. And again, we have basically the same here, though this is actually buttoned into the, the tighter button. We do have two buttons there. The buttons aren't as widely spaced as on the 1960 pattern, but we do have the gusset and we do have the pointed cuff there, as you can see. So again, drawing design elements there from the 1960 pattern, though slightly modified. Similarly, again, we have a half circle uh, on each side of the seam here, forming a, a round uh, reinforcement piece on the elbow there on the 1960 pattern. That has also been carried across here. The principle is exactly the same. Two half circles of cloth sewn each side of the seam, and that gives you the, the elbow reinforcement there. This being a feature of the later 1960 pattern, the second issue 1960 pattern smock which from what I understand is what Ireland would have received and what, what was issued. And that is directly carried across to the 1980s combat uniform we can see here. Similarly, looking up further up on the, the shoulder here, we have the epaulette, the long epaulette running up to the collar. That is a feature taken directly from the 1960 pattern again. And the reason for that, of course, is that you have buttons up on the collar, which allow you to attach a hood. So we have another button around the back, which we'll look at when we turn these around and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of the two uniforms here, we can see construction is very similar with a seam down the rear in both instances and these darts let in at the waist there to take the waist in. Very, very similar construction in that regard. If we turn this up here, you can see what I mean about the buttons. You have the epaulets coming right up to the collar and you have a third button in the center which allows you to attach a hood. Uh, and this is exactly the same. It's di copied directly from the 1960 pattern. This particular smock is missing the center button, but it would have been there originally. Uh, and that, as I say, is uh, copied directly across from the 1960 pattern uniform and serves the same purpose. That's a look at the external details of these two. Uh, there's no point looking at the other side really because the sleeves are exactly the same and the, the arrangement of the epaulets and everything. But we'll have a look at the inside details of these now, look at the lining and so forth and the labels in this particular example. So here we have the smock and the tunic turned inside out. And you can see here a lot of very similar details. The breast pockets are similar, but they're not exactly the same. You do have two internal breast pockets on the Irish combat tunic as you do on the British smock, uh, but they're a slightly different shape, slightly smaller in this instance. However, looking lower down, we actually have extra poacher's pockets here. And as we'll see on the British smock in a moment when we turn it round, there's a poacher's pocket to the rear. This actually has button pockets internally on both hips to give you two large compartments here, as well as the one large poacher's pocket to the rear. So quite a lot of extra carrying capacity in the skirts of the tunic there. And again, we can see the details of the interior of the collar there with the button and tab to allow that to be fastened up. And you also get a nice shot of the, the metal zip there, half length, as you can see in both instances with buttons below. And we have the draw cord at waist and hem there, as you can see uh, in both instances. Again, this is uh, the, on the British uh, smock there, just a stitched eyelet there. On here, we have the metal eyelets, so slight improvement in the design there, a bit of extra durability in having metal eyelets at both waist and hem for the draw cord. The lining material, which you can see the sleeves are lined fully to the cuff uh, in both instances. The lining material of the Irish smock is a heavier duty, uh, a, a, a slightly coarser grade, heavier cloth than that of the British. And you can see the, the internal construction of the gusset there. Um, not uh, skimping on the fabric there to make the gusset. Uh, we have similar on the British here, although the, the gusset is slightly more neatly worked in than it is on the Irish example there. To the rear here, you can see very large poacher's pocket on the Irish combat tunic, uh, and that is uh, in similar to the design of the British 1960 pattern combat smock, but this is a bit smaller, and obviously you don't have the front portions as well on the British, you do have on the Irish, so that's a, a development of the design there to give greater carrying capacity. We do have a hanging tab which has come unstitched on one side here at the collar there, and that's mirrored. We have a slightly smaller one on the Irish combat tunic here, and we have the label up in the collar, which we'll have a look at in detail now. Here we have the label, and you can see here Westport Clothing Limited, the manufacturer, size one, and the date 1998. So quite a late manufactured example in this instance. The sizing of Irish combat uniform is quite different from that of the British. There's a lot less 
size variation in these. Uh, I fit a size one quite nicely and I'm not particularly small. You can see below that instructions for lubrication of the zipper and for what to do in cold weather, wearing the hood and keep cool, don't overheat. And they, these instructions are fairly consistent whenever you look at different combat smocks. Uh, certainly very similar to those on the British 1960 pattern labels. But have a look at the trousers from the two uniforms now and we'll talk about these and sort of try and compare them bit by bit. It's going to be a little bit difficult because I don't have of course a mannequin I can put these on but I can talk about the features and hold them up one by one. These being the set from the Irish combat suit we have here a holdover from the 1960 pattern the dressing pocket on the leg there and in contrast to the 1960 pattern, we're looking at the same side here. You can see the seams of the dressing pocket here. We have an additional mat pocket, more similar to the 1968 pattern, which obviously in British service introduced a second leg pocket. We have fixed belt loops here and an angled pocket. If we compare to the 1960 pattern, we have buttoned belt loops here and a relatively straight pocket on the, uh, on the hip there. So that's a difference between the two. Um, in addition to the, the extra pocket, a feature directly carried across, however, is the large reinforcement piece we can see on the 1960 pattern here and on the Irish combat uniform there. And also at the bottom, we do have a channel for draw cords. We'll see in better detail when we turn these inside out. Again, the channel is actually has metal eyelets on the Irish combat suit and it doesn't on the British. They're just stitched in, as you can see there, and stitched in at the lower point there around the bottom of the leg. Turning these over, we can see the pockets on the Irish trousers have a bit of a pleat worked in here. We don't have on the 1960 pattern. If we look here, this is just a, a plain flat pocket stitched onto the leg. Although the flap arrangement and so forth is very similar. Uh, the design is slightly modified there to give a bit of extra carrying capacity in the leg pockets on the trousers. Compare them from the front here, you can see the Irish trousers here, heavy metal zip, and obviously the features in terms of belt loops and so forth we talked about already. And then we have the back here. There's no rear pockets or anything. But you can again see the stitched belt loops and the large reinforcement piece over the seat of the trousers there. In contrast we have the British 1960 pattern here, you can see the metal zip, the button and everything, but the button belt loops that we've already talked about. In addition to that we do have side adjusters which you can see the buttons for and the tabs when we turn these round here, you can see the tab for that there. We do also have a rear pocket here which is another difference, but again you do have that large area of reinforcement over the seat, so that's a feature that's been carried across to the Irish combat uniform there. Contrast the inside of these now, and you can see here the Irish trousers, the Irish issue combat trousers, very similar in the terms of lining and so forth. We have tapes there to hold the lining down to the base there. As already said, the channel for the draw cord at the ankle is actually fitted with metal eyelets, which is a nice feature. And we have brace buttons here and a tab with those. If we look at these on the rear there, you can see that with the label up in the waist, which we'll have a look at in detail in just a moment. If we move these around again here, you can see the front and again the brace buttons there uh, and the lining which is very similar to the 1960 pattern which I'll just have a look at now. You can see the lining arrangement is very similar here, runs down to a similar length down the legs. We don't have the eyelets for the uh, uh, draw cord at the ankle, they're just stitched in so they're just uh, made like uh, buttonholes, there's no metal eyelet there. So a slight improvement in the design I would say there, extra reinforcement. And we have brace buttons all the way around as you can see here with the tabs as well. Um, so very similar in that regard, uh, allowing them to be worn with braces. Uh, but that's a con contrast of the, the two uh, compared to the 1960 pattern. The arrangement of the lining and everything is very, very similar. Here we have the label of the trousers we were looking at on the mannequin. And these are again a size one. These made in 1992. And again, the manufacturer is Westport Clothing Limited, uh, made in Republic of Ireland. And then we have further instructions beneath that, which you can read yourself if you wish to pause the video. Just by way of contrast, we have a label from an earlier pair of trousers here, dated 1985, and these are size 3. Very similar information on the label, otherwise the same manufacturer even. I believe this is the first year of manufacture for this combat uniform. The final thing to contrast here, just a comparison of two different types of buttons used on the combat uniform. On the left here, we have the 1985 dated pair of trousers, which I presume to have the earlier pattern of button. I, these don't appear to have been added. These appear to be the original buttons to the trousers. And on the right we have the 1992 dated pair of trousers which show a different pattern of button. Small detail to mention but this appears to have been a change over time, a move from the buttons on the left to those on the right. So there we are, that's a look at Irish issue combat uniform, the mid 1980s issue on through the 1990s. Quite an interesting uniform as I say and obviously drawing a lot of design features from the 1960 pattern but introducing some new ones as well. 
And I really like it, not only because it's a progression from the 1960 pattern, but it's nice to see such a, a late manufactured combat uniform being made in such heavy duty cloth and being made at such a high quality with the heavy duty metal zips and so forth. A lot of other countries have moved away from this. You've seen cheaper manufacturing in combat clothing. This maintains a really high quality and I, I like it from that point of view. And also because obviously it's a progression from the 1960 pattern. I do hope you found that interesting, as I always say. Uh, if you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing from the more of my videos, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And if you've already subscribed or you're newly subscribing, please do make sure you hit the little bell down below, the little notification button. This will of course alert you when I upload future videos. There's also, if you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both a Patreon and PayPal link down below. And a massive thank you to everybody as ever who supports the channel through those two methods. It's greatly appreciated. There's also social media for the channel as well. There's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all linked down below. And if you want to make contact, but you don't really use social media, there's also an email address down there as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So until next time, bye for now.